So let's start off with transferring our image to our canvas using a sheet of carbon or graphite paper. You can find carbon paper at your local office supply store or by using the affiliate link below. Center your Sally stencil on your canvas and then tape the sheet of carbon paper behind her. Make sure to place the shiny side down. Position Sally about one inch from the bottom edge of your canvas to allow room for her shoulders. Then take a basic ballpoint pen and begin tracing around the image. You want to press firmly, but not so much as to tear the paper or damage the canvas beneath. Start with her head and facial features. Then move on to her hair. Trace every single line in her hair. Finally, move on to her neck and clothing. Extend her neckline and shoulders all the way to the bottom edge of your canvas. Carefully peel off the carbon paper and the stencil. Your canvas should look like this. Now tape your stencil to your easel or somewhere nearby. You'll need it for reference. Now let's start painting. Mix equal amounts of naphthol red, titanium white, and ultramarine blue until you get the sort of eggplant purple. Dip a mop brush into the purple and then fill in all the areas around Sally using a swishing motion. It's kind of like making figure eights on your canvas. Once the majority of the canvas has been covered, switch to a 1 inch angled or flat brush to get around her head and shoulders. Now don't forget to paint the top, sides, and bottom of your canvas. While the purple paint is still wet, dip that same mop brush into a bit of titanium white and dab it near the corners and edges of your canvas. This will give the background a nice cloudy look as opposed to just a flat purple. Next, mix some tropical blue with a bit of titanium white until you get this pale blue color. Then fill in all the areas of Sally's face using a half inch angled brush. You can paint right over her lashes and stitches. Just avoid the white parts of her eyes and her lips. Once you finish her face, move on down and fill in her neck. Next, take a number 5 round brush and load it with some titanium white and fill in both of her eyes. To make Sally's signature red hair, we're going to mix some naphthol red with a bit of cadmium yellow and titanium white. Load a half inch flat brush with this orange red color and fill in Sally's hair. Switch to a number 4 flat brush when it comes time to fill in the areas around her face and neck. Step back and take a look at what you've done so far. At this point, Sally looks sort of like a blue alien. But rest assured, by the end, she's going to look like the ragdoll that we all love. Now I want you to mix a tiny bit of that leftover hair color with some cadmium yellow to get a nice warm golden yellow and then fill in the area of her dress that goes across her right shoulder. This would be your left. Then go over to her left shoulder and fill in her sleeve. Here's what it will look like when you're done. For the other sleeve, I tried using tropical blue straight from the bottle, but it was too similar to her skin color. So instead, I want you to add a tiny bit of the ultramarine blue to the tropical blue to get this darker blue, which is the perfect shade we need. Use this color to fill in her right sleeve. To get the pinkish purple for her dress, I mixed equal parts of red, white, and blue until I got that same purple as the background. 
And then I went back and added a bit more red and white until it turned pink. Use this color to fill in the remaining part of her dress. So here's where we are now. It looks like we only need to go back in with our black to fill in the details and then we'll be done. So let's have at it. Load a number zero round brush or a number zero liner with some Mars black and outline Sally's face. Then trace her eyes, the lines around her eyes, and her eyelashes. If there are any lines that are hard to see, just use your stencil as a reference guide. Add her nose, fill in her lips, and then draw on her mouth seams and stitches. Add the stitches that go up across her cheek and forehead and then draw the lines across the top of her neck. Now it's time to trace all the lines in Sally's hair. Here's what it looks like when you're halfway done. When you're completely done with her hair, trace the outer edges of her shoulders, and then go back in and add some more black for the shadowed areas of her hair. It should look like this. Now it's time to finish up her dress. Trace all the lines between the different color patches and then add some stripes to her yellow sleeve. To create her dress's swirl pattern, we're going to add a few half circles here in this top corner and a few more here in the opposite corner. and one big swirl in the center. And then a few more half circles near the bottom. Then we're just going to add some stitching on her shoulders. Draw on her neck seam and stitches. And then one long wavy seam coming up the center. Add stitches along that line as well. Now it's time to step back and take a look at what you've accomplished. Wasn't that easy? See, you can paint anything as long as you break it down into steps. Here's our Sally painting hanging on a wall. Doesn't she look great? <laughs>